there any organ in our body that can float on water? Give it a shot. If your answer is that there is no organ in our body that can float on water, then you're probably wrong. Because we have the exception of lungs. Yes, surprisingly, the only organ in the human body that can float on water is the pair of lungs. And not only this, but there are many other interesting facts about lungs. Tell me one thing, is this organ that important? Why are lungs so widely studied? Well, lungs form the core of the respiratory system. And this system makes sure that we are alive. And how is that done? We've seen how aquatic animals carry out the vital gaseous exchange. Now it's time we have a look at the respiratory system in humans. This is how the complete respiratory system looks like. It begins from the nose here and ends at the alveoli in the lungs. Let us get introduced to each part in detail. First comes the upper respiratory tract. It consists of the nasal cavity, the pharynx and the larynx. Let's commence with studying the complete nasal cavity. If we zoom into the structure, we find that the nasal chamber looks somewhat like this. It mainly has three regions or parts. This is the part we're all familiar with. The nose. Any idea what the openings are called as? Yes, they're called as nostrils. The nostrils, also called as nares, are these openings. Just as the nasal chamber within commences, we have the first region called the vestibule. This region bears tiny hair-like structures which serve different purposes. Any guesses what functions the vestibule region will have? The region has a lining of mucus that helps trap any foreign particle which enters through the inhaled air. Also, the hair in this region expel the trapped particles out with rhythmic movement. So the vestibule region has all the arrangements to defend the bacteria or other harmful particles that may try entering the system with the inhaled air. The next region following this is the respiratory region. This region usually serves many different functions. Most importantly, it warms the air to get it to the normal body temperature. Then it moistens it to make it suitable for the body. And lastly, it helps send some air to the third nasal chamber and push the remaining air forward into the next part of the respiratory tract. Now, what do you think the third chamber would do with the air? Well, the name olfactory says it all. The region is responsible for the sense of smell. It contains highly sensitive cells which send the received signal to the brain and help in identifying the smell. Post the nasal chamber comes the next part called the pharynx. This is like a common connection between the respiratory and the digestive tract. And why do we say so? Well, as you can see here, this acts like a common passage between the nasal chamber on the top and the windpipe and the food pipe just lying below it. The pharynx is also further divided into three parts. The nasopharynx, which is the continuation with the nasal chamber, Oropharynx, the one that lies behind the oral cavity, this is the central region. And lastly, we have the laryngopharynx, which is the last region connecting to the next part, that is the larynx. What do you think is the pharynx important for? Well, apart from receiving food and air from the respective zones, the pharynx performs one of the most crucial tasks. Imagine what will happen even if a small amount of food enters the respiratory tract by mistake. Apart from the discomfort caused, it will be a serious concern. But how does the food know the way to the food pipe each and every time? How does the food accidentally enter the windpipe? Well, that's taken care of by the pharynx. Do you notice a small flap here? This flap, named the epiglottis, falls over to cover the surface below when the food enters the system. As a result, the opening of the windpipe gets covered and the food strictly passes into the esophagus. The presence of the epiglottis makes the pharynx an extremely important part of the system. 
Now next on the list is the larynx. The last part of the upper respiratory tract is also known as the voice box. Now this name talks about its significance. Is this responsible for creating the voice that we have? Yes, the larynx is involved in the sound production. And how does it produce sound exactly? Well, the voice box has lateral folds somewhat like this. Now imagine air to pass through these folds. When they are open, nothing really great can be noticed. But now, when they are closed and when air passes through them, then the folds vibrate. And this gives rise to sound. And that's how the sound is produced by the voice box. The larynx is just a small box-like structure, but in adults, it just protrudes slightly. It becomes more prominent in males after puberty. And this bulging structure in the throat is called the Adam's apple. Well, these three components make up the upper respiratory tract. The nasal cavity, the pharynx and the larynx. Now let's have a glance at the parts of the lower respiratory tract in the next part.